that it was such a bad love in the seven sea was a visibly angry man on the 16th of September 2009. Of course, it was just about 60 days in office and with all the what you saw in this banking system and the extension to other parts of the financial system. And so the bull in the China shop was all about those unintended and unintended consequences of the crisis in the banking sector. So we're just about uh, 30 days away from the 14th of August 2009, first anniversary. But the key question is, this reform is different. And of course, the bottom line is what are the burdens that the regulator bear? Let's go back to the studio here, where I guess goes on the show, for the from proposal. Thank you. Uh, the one in the China show was about several uh, hundreds of pages of a report put together by Prussia and, and, and NBC News Corporation. And uh, uh, the uh, central issue there was that how do we get this reform on, gentle, as it were, said to be impactful. We said the government will not give up. They haven't given up. But now that we are just at the threshold of that, uh, let's recap what has happened ever since. And where we are at the moment, at least as of yesterday. Um, if you if you take a look back at the motivation for writing the report, um, uh, which was on August 22nd, um, some seven days after the CBN issued its own, um, were the actions taken in respect of uh, debtors and the seeming criminalization of being bank debtors that occurred. And we then felt that there was need to document the true position of what happened, to document the options that were open to be taken, to uh, open to, uh, to the central bank and to everyone, and to detail also the unintended consequences, moving beyond the conspiracy type uh, notion. I said, factually, was there a basis for it? We agree. Uh, was, there, was the damage as deep as that? Yes. Uh, are there options in which it can be dealt with other than the means and approach used or a combination of them? Possibly, yes. There's no, there's always options. But I'm sure that the government himself recognizes those options. Um, but there's also something about Nigeria that makes change difficult. And I think the real lesson in all this, in one year from today, maybe you want to look at the indices, is that it shows you just how difficult change can be in Nigeria. Um, I think that is the real lesson for me. And I think the real lesson for the whole system, again, more or less, is to also understand that there is a particular way you cannot, you cannot achieve change if there is no momentum and the people do not understand the reason for a change. Because you are talking about change on a matter that affects people's pockets. The reason it becomes a casualty. So by the survival of this century, you are talking about employees who will lose jobs. We are talking about people who will lose sources of income. There is a very different approach to dealing with this kind of problem. Is it that you incentivize them in terms of showing them a better way out? Or is it that you raise the bar in such a way that you can force them out? Or if you want to go with a massacre, which is also a classic approach, which he has done, you need the political backing, which he had. Don't forget the most significant thing between then and now is that there is a change in presidency, which is, a, which is a major factor to the burden of the regulator. So the key question is that, is politics winning? Politics always wins. It makes sense. I mean, if a man is a leader, he is there for the purposes of politics, and there are certain things that China put in. And it is an illusion to assume some billions or some thing wins. Not politics always wins. Economic theorists will tell you that at the end of the day, it, it will be a political decision. So no matter how smart it is, at the end of the day, it becomes a political decision. So I think part of our development in our democracy is also to be smart enough to recognize that politics is very critical. And it, it's not as you describe it as say, oh, there's politics in the office or not. Oh no, political decision making is everything. So what is the political decision making? Politics winning when we talk about banking reform. Banking is at the heart of every economy and every country in the world, so Nigeria is not an exception. Um, over the past uh, few weeks and uh, few months, the, for example, the National Assembly had been uh, somehow silent about the entire banking reform. 
We have to be fair, just when we talk about the business area team and we talk about uh, the president, that's a different argument. When you go to the legislature, that's a separate argument entirely altogether. That's a different aspect of their country entirely. So what are those guys doing? As you should know, you work in the media. You should know. I mean, that's a separate argument entirely. I mean, let me ask you one question. What is their role? Why come nobody's doing anything? Have you had anything? It, it, it's, I would say we must move away from this notion that until there is a public hearing or there is um, uh, or there is uh, some scandal, they are obviously working, but working towards what? You go back to the central argument. What is the objective? I mean, let me give you one example. I was reading Ruben about you, uh, his article whereby he said that uh, uh, the Senate president advocated that for double justice over the kidnapping matter, maybe because he was a bit angry. I mean, this is the country's chief law officer advocating the use of double justice to deal with a problem, no matter how bad it is. Uh, and so for me, I give a sense that part of our own learning curve, really, and we must understand that, really, is that the media is, uh, is also a key part of the problem. How come nobody has left your, your function to go in there to go and say, find out what all these committees on banking or capital market is doing? Why do you wait for press releases to start bringing that news? I mean, some executive directors left some banks, nobody, nobody's finding out what happened. So nobody bothers. You just take the news and you roll with it and you sensationalize it. You ask me what happened in the first place since then and now. There is some level of Appreciation that there is going to take a look at what is going on in the banking sector, an acknowledgement that there is a linkage with the economy, and a more than interesting acceptance that there is a need for debate, heavy debates on the subjects of what banking reforms we want, how we want to implement it, and when will it happen. A phrase that goes conspiracy of criminality. It was contained in the Bull in the Child Show report <laughs> about a year ago. And uh, would you say that where we are right now, uh, 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 16th of uh, July 2009, that there is a conspiracy of criminality to frustrate the banking before? Well, the first place, the definition of the conspiracy of criminality goes thus. You find a system whereby the staff, the senior management, in some cases the board, the regulator, the market, sits down to hold a discussion over a transaction. The level of incestuous relationship that occurred there, which we all know, and we appeal it, forms a, a, a natural um, coming together of a set of people to go into what we then describe as a conspiracy of criminality or honor among thieves. Well, 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 well this is even much more deeper. It's a conspiracy of criminality whereby we know we have pulled a major step. We have set up a subsidiary. We put more of the banks in there. We've done this. It's going to a step working firm. We have all the players. And then somebody comes and says, gentlemen, this thing is not right. They have more to lose. And the argument is that what the board of the China Shop was actually saying was not so much the indictment of the Sibian government was to understand the imperatives of change and that the action that needs to be taken must address the incentives for that community to grow. That means the staff cannot report his bosses. The regulator has been so much driven by society's acceptance of values in terms of money that he makes it himself to be there. And that people like Labrador Sanusi are, are turning out to be rare breeds in the system. We have written too many positions that make it look as if one is after the governor, but no, he must be held accountable. That is part of the discipline that comes from being a professional, and he must recognize that. But that what we seek to achieve is that look, we are all in this game together. So for those who are interested in bringing him down, it serves no purpose. For those who are unlooking and seeing how things are going, you have to go in the economy for 